I'm Dr. Pat McHugh, the Director of the Equine Reproduction Lab at Colorado State University. I'd like to welcome you to our facility to talk about aspects of the pregnant mare, care of the newborn foal, and evaluation of the placenta. Once the mare is foaled out and the foal is doing fine, you've tested the colostrum, the foal is standing and nursed, and, and is, uh, has passed meconium, about that time, the mare should have passed her placenta. Most mares pass their placenta within one to two hours, but we would really like them to pass their placenta by three hours. Mares that retain a placenta longer than three hours may be prone to uh, serious medical conditions such as metritis or laminitis. Once the mare has passed her placenta, it is uh, prudent for all mare owners or foaling attendants to evaluate the placenta to make sure that the placenta is intact and that there are no evidence, that there is no evidence of placental diseases. We're going to evaluate the placenta of a mare that foaled out last night. Like most uh, situations, uh, this mare passed her placenta inside out. Uh, the placenta has three components to it. There's the, the amnion, which is a, a, a thin, translucent, uh, whitish to smoky gray membrane. Placenta has three components. Uh, one is the, the amnion. It's a translucent, uh, white to smoky gray membrane. And you can easily see small blood vessels coursing through the amnion. The next part of the placenta would be the umbilical cord. And the last part is the Coriolanus. Now this is inside out, the way that many of them are passed. We're going to spread this out and look at the various placental horns. That's a tip of, of one placental horn. We're going to spread the placenta out in a, in a Y or F shape. So we've got the, the pregnant horn here. It's always a little thicker, a little more edematous, the body of the placenta, and then the non-pregnant horn. And again, we're looking at the, the allantoic surface. It's often a light pink with almost a purplish hue to it, and you can see prominent blood vessels easy on the surface of the, of the placenta, on the allantoic surface. We're going to turn this placenta right side out to show what it looked like inside the mare. And this is actually the surface that one needs to critically evaluate, which is the outer or chorionic surface of the chorioallantoas of the mare. Spread that horn tip out. Again, we've, we've spread the placenta out into a, to a broad F or, or Y configuration with the pregnant horn visible here, the non-pregnant horn, the body of the placenta, and this is the area of the placenta that was adjacent to mom's cervix. And if I put this back together, in many instances, we can see a, a light-colored area that would represent the, what's called the cervical star. Once the placenta has been turned right side out with the chorionic surface visible, again, it's a, you get this appearance of a, of a velvety, brick red appearance. The velvet, velvetiness is due to the microcotyledons of the placenta that are attaching to mom's uterus in a, in a Velcro-like attachment. When, when a mare passes her placenta, normally the entire placenta is, is passed out of the mare. Sometimes a piece of the placenta uh, breaks off and one thing that's tremendously important to horse owners and foaling attendants is to recognize that sometimes the tip of the non-pregnant horn will break off and will be retained inside the mare. Horses with a retained placenta can have severe medical complications. They can have medical complications if the entire placenta is retained in the mare or medical complications if just a piece of the placenta is inside the mare. And generally, if a, piece of, if a piece of placenta is going to be retained inside the mare, it's going to be the tip of the non-pregnant horn. So part of the placental evaluation is to 
to look to see if both horn tips are present, very specifically the tip of the non-pregnant horn. This horn is thin, it looks almost corrugated as opposed to the pregnant horn, which is physically a thicker horn. It feels edematous. This horn is almost never torn off and retained inside the mare, but this horn may be torn off anywhere, the entire horn or part of the horn may be, may be torn off and, and remain inside the mare. So critically look at the presence of, of both horn tips. Look for any areas in the, in the surface of the, the placenta on both sides to see if there's any abnormalities or any lesions on the placenta. And also look at the area along the, the cervical star. This placenta is normal in that there is no thickening or abnormal area around the cervical star region. Mares with a, pla a placentitis or a placental infections may get bacteria that work their way up the reproductive tract, traverse through the cervix and gain access to the uterus. And those bacteria will form an infection in this area of the placenta. And that condition called placentitis um, may lead to uh, problems with the pregnancy and, and may lead to inf infections of the, of the fetus while it's still inside the mare. So owners after the placenta is passed should critically look at this zone to see if there's any evidence of an abnormality such as thickening, a mucus covering here, or any other abnormalities in this area. If there is, they should contact their veterinarian, describe that, or have their veterinarian look at the placenta either on the farm or take the placenta to your veterinarian to have that person uh, look at it to evaluate it. In some instances, early detection of placentitis may suggest that the, uh, that the foal has been compromised in utero, and that foal may require medical therapy in the first few days of life. Again, preventive medicine can, uh, can help bypass some uh, major medical complications of a foal in the first few weeks of life.